This is called New in Box, and this was the second Love Doll. And the interesting thing was that in ordering the Love Doll, you could specify every anatomical detail of the doll and order it. And then a box would arrive like this, and you would open it up, and the, the doll would arrive in a, in a kind of in a camisole or, or a nightgown with a little box. I, I'm really, this is horrifying to say, but the little box had an engagement ring and genitalia in it. That's, we put that away. <laughs> We never dealt with the little box, but... Um. The most inspiring thing about the love doll, the Japanese love doll, is the fact that it's life-size. For my entire history of my work, I've been shooting dolls and puppets, mannequins, cutouts, and to find a life-size doll was the most amazing thing that's ever happened to my work. The entire world became my set, my playhouse, my dollhouse. I did take the love dolls and move them around the room, rooms of a house. And the, the whole series is titled The Love Dolls Day, day One Through, I'm not remembering how many days it is. I think it, it's about 50 days. But my idea was, I, when the love doll arrived, I thought it's going to take me really a long time to understand how to photograph this doll. And then I thought, well, you know, I've been taking pictures for a really long time now. Maybe the pictures I take on day one are as interesting as the pictures I take on day 100. And maybe the, uh, the, the, the story or my chronicling how I get to know the doll photographically, maybe that's the story. I really try not to personalize the doll. I mean, it's hard not to say she, but a couple of uh, people commented that it was a surrogate daughter for me. Not at all. It's not anthropomorphized for me in any way. This image is called The Love Doll Day Lying in Bed. It's one of the images where I feel like the love doll looks so real. There was a night table next to the bed that had a mirror, so I was able to get the reflection of her one eye. As I work with the doll more, and even after I finish the series, I'll probably have much more of a window into what the sexual aspects of the doll mean to me, but right now it's just like a little below the surface. The doll is Japanese and made in Japan. When I brought the doll here to New York, I had her go through a number of sort of mundane, everyday poses. Nothing essentially American, nothing essentially Japanese, but just sort of living a life, maybe a little bit like my life. I only thought about Japan and Japanese culture, which I'm a little bit obsessed with, and what's really beautiful. And I thought about taking an American's most cliched idea of a Japanese woman, which is the geisha, and kind of returning the doll to its Japanese roots. This is the, the doll head, of course, without the wig, but with the geisha makeup that took a really, really long time to apply. It's, it's really the makeup from Japan. Of course, the original makeup, from what I understand, had lead in it. Pretty unhealthy. Um, first comes the pink and then the white over it. The really great thing about photography is that it makes the unreal seem more real and also the real seem more unreal. So I always feel like I've understood the transformation that happens in the viewfinder. I'm able to look at a scene and edit everything out around it and that I have a real understanding of what my camera will do to change what I see.
So this was one of the last days and one of the only times that I ever had the two love dolls in one picture. 